according to Google, is a term referring to a group of aesthetics based on the visuals of West European royalty. It is, to me, a pastel and elegant version of Dark Academia. It's full of castles, gowns, swords, and of course royalty. I had a lot of fun experimenting with this new aesthetic I hadn't done a video on and didn't know much about, and I really like how the projects came out, so here they are. A chessboard. You'll need to start off with some cardboard or a piece of wood if you have it, and then decide the measurements you want for your board. There are 64 squares on chess and checkerboards, so choose your measurements in a way that will be simplest for you to make the markings later to split it up into all of the squares. Each row has eight, so I decided to do an eight inch by eight inch square just so that it was super easy to mark every single inch. You can use just a single layer, but I wanted mine to be a little bit more thick and raised, so I glued together three of the same size piece of cardboard. Once they were all attached, you can make the squares by using paper or paint, and whichever one you choose, I would recommend that you start off with the white base first. So if you're doing paper, cut out an entire square of paper to then put on black squares, or if you're doing paint, paint everything white because it's a lot easier to do the whole surface and then add in the black than it is to do every single one individually. So like I said, you can either cut out these black squares or like I did a combination, I had white paper and then I made the markings for every single square and filled them in with black paint. Once I had a few coats on, I touched up a little bit with some white and then grabbed a scrap piece of paper to just cover up the edges so that you couldn't see the corrugated cardboard, gluing that on and evening up the edges. For the pieces, I'm using the same clay that I showed you how to make in my Goblin Core video. Just add one part of water and one part of salt to two parts of flour and form your shapes. I did two chess pieces, a rook and a pawn as examples, and also two little checker circles. Once done shaping, put those on a pan with some parchment at about 180 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 to 20 minutes depending on how big your pieces are, and then just paint them however you'd like. dress. A huge part of royal core for me are the beautiful gowns that you see all over Pinterest. So I knew I needed to make one, but I wanted to do it in a really affordable and also low step process. You'll need a curtain, bed sheet, tablecloth, or just normal cut fabric, and you're going to want to fold it in half. Once you've done so, you're going to need three pieces, the skirt, bodice, and sleeves. I'm making a half circle skirt, which I got the measurements for on just the first circle skirt calculator that pops up on Google and chalked out the lines for that, the fold being at the top and the open end being at the bottom. Then I marked out a rectangle for the sleeves and the last section I left for the bodice. Once cut out, again, the pieces are the half circle skirt, the two sleeves, and then the bodice, which will have two layers. The extra pieces in between I'll use for scraps later to tie up the back, but that's optional. For the skirt, the only thing you'll need to do is hem the top and bottom and then sew up that open end so that the back of your skirt is closed, leaving a few inches to be able to slip into it. For the bodice, I'm just putting in two super simple darts under my bust so the fitting is a little bit better. And then the sleeves, you just need to hem the top and bottom and then sew along the side. Starting off with the skirt, like I said, I just hemmed the top and bottom and then sewed up that side piece. The bodice, I marked out some darts and then pinned them, sewing both of those in. And then depending on how much material you had and how big the sleeves are, you can leave it as a straight sleeve and off the shoulder sleeve Sleeve, or if you had a bit more material, you can pleat them up to the proper size to make a puffy sleeve. Once each individual piece is sewn on its own and properly fitted, you can just attach them together, sew the bodice onto the skirt, and then the sleeves pinned on where you want them and sewn in. To close up the back, it is completely up to you. You can use a zipper, buttons, or like in my case, I took every single last bit of scraps to make these little tubes of fabric to fold into loops, and then sewed so many pieces together to make this tie that I ended up using to sit everything together. A simple dress, clearly not the best, but I think it still looks really, really fun. Now, I know it doesn't 
doesn't have a hundred layers of tulle with a beautifully pieced together bodice and a bunch of hand sewn appliques, but for what I made it out of and the pretty simplified process, I still think it turned out really nice. I had a lot of fun making them and really enjoy how they turned out. I do understand though that not everybody has a sewing machine, so behind the scenes I set out determined to make one of these dresses completely by hand. A huge help with this project was Skillshare, the sponsor of this video. If you don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of courses, new ones being added all the time. A pretty recent one I was super excited about and took to help with this project was Bernadette Banner's Hand Sewing Basics. If I have little knowledge on machine sewing, I have even less in hand sewing, so this was so immensely helpful. Each class is split up into different sections, so if you already know things, you can skip around. There are levels from beginner to advanced, courses on anything you could possibly want to learn, if it's a hobby or for productivity. If you wanted to hand sew this project and take Bernadette's course or any of the other ones on Skillshare, they are offering a one month entire free trial to any of the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description of this video. Thank you again so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and helping me make this dress. So this is the hand-sewn version of the royal cord dress. I'm so incredibly happy with how it turned out. It's just really awesome to know that every single stitch in this was sewn by me. And if you'd like to do the same thing, click the link in the description, take Bernadette's course or any of the other amazing ones on Skillshare and get an entire month free. A hollow book. I try to keep my book gore to a minimum, so I'm not going to be savagely cutting out all of the pages in the center of a book to put something in. Instead, I'm going to start out with a cardboard base and move on from there. In my Dark Academia video where I showed you how to make a book cover, I formed it out of three separate pieces, but for this, just so that it has more of a box style, I'm going to stick with one and mark where I want the spine to start and end and actually cut out that part of corrugation in the cardboard so that it easily bends over the sides. I'm also just slicing down some of the spines so that I can round it a bit, but that's optional. You can paint this, add fabric, or like I did, add paper to just cover up the cardboard and make it a bit more decorative. You can go super modern with this or super old timey, age it with paint and different things like that. Add a whole bunch of decorations if you'd like, but after you're done with that, just use your base and set it on some more cardboard to mark out some pieces for the actual sides and then against the wall so that you can form the actual box. Once those are done, I'm just going to glue those in place a little bit from the edge so it mimics where pages would sit, and then painted those in a cream and then added some details with a slightly darker cream to kind of emulate what the top of a book and the pages would look like. I covered up some more of the inside with paper and paint before needing to add something to tie because the tension on the cardboard wouldn't shut on its own. So you can take some ribbons, scrap fabric, string, or like I did, some lace. Mine was a bit thick, so I cut it in half down the middle and just used some more hot glue to attach those strands on either side so I could properly tie and close it. Tiaras, crowns, and combs. I've showed you how to make very floral and plant-esque crowns in the past, but for some more royal core ones, here is how I made them. Combs up first, I'm taking some wire and choosing the width and height that I want my actual comb piece to be, and using some needle nose pliers to bend and press those ends into place properly. You kind of want this smaller and then larger back and forth look to it, just the quintessential comb design to properly slide in and stay in your hair. And once that's done, you can pretty much attach anything you want to the top. You can do crystals, buttons, beads, charms. You can do more of a plant style one. I think one with roses would be so beautiful. But whatever adornment you choose, you can either attach with wire or hot glue to the top. I put a strand of wire at the back for kind of just some more support to hold the buttons I chose to do on mine, and that worked really well. For the tiara and crowns, it's basically the same technique. The tiara, I just cut the wire a little bit longer than half the way around my head, so it sits like a tiara, whereas the crown you would obviously want to go all the way around. Again, the embellishment is all up to you. You can do cool designs with the actual wire. You can again do a floral one. You can do ones with embellishments that hang over your forehead, or you can do one that goes vertically up. There's not many direct instructions for this. It really is just whatever you choose, but here are the ones that I made.
like I said in the beginning, I had a ton of fun diving into a new aesthetic. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I am so obsessed with the dresses. Probably one of my favorite projects I've ever made on this channel. Thank you again so much Skillshare for sponsoring this one. I am wishing you all a wonderful week to come and I shall see you in my next video. Thank <laughs> you.